Hello, my name is Alexander Kerry. Welcome to the program. Russia's Ministry of Foreign Affairs recently announced the decision to withdraw their offices from the Joint Center for Control and Coordination, the organization monitoring the Russian-backed separatist controlled territory in eastern Ukraine. Now, this sudden withdrawal has raised eyebrows in Ukraine and the OSCE mission monitoring in Donbass. Joining us in the studio to talk about this matter is Captain Vladislav Litovchenko. Thank you for joining us. Um, so, first question is, Russia's official reason is that Ukraine plans to introduce a new procedure for the entry and stay of Russian citizens in its territory. First, do you think it's a valid reason and why now for this withdrawal? Well, uh, Alex, thank you for the question. Uh, it's uh, really very difficult to make a predictions when it uh, actually comes about Russian Federation. Uh, I know that it happened before. Uh, of course, uh, uh, this uh, reason was just a reason for them to withdraw because they play in their own games and nobody knows uh, what is the scenario they run. Uh, but they, uh, I repeat, they have done it before, before Dybalceva, and uh, you know the result. So we are ready for any scenario that uh, actually can proceed after this uh, decision. But for me, it was just a reason to withdraw the officers. So, is it connected, you talked about the Baltseve, uh, is it connected to the recent increase and in attack by the Russian black separatist forces in Novoluhansk, for example? I think that the uh, current increase just followed uh, this withdrawal of uh, Russian side of uh, JCCC. Mm. So, so, for me, it's uh, very obvious uh, the escalation just followed it. Um, you said that the Russian Federation reaction is hard to predict, but in your guess, what kind, of mo <laughs> what kind of motives could be behind this move? Well, I'm not an intel guy. However, um, there are various of potential scenarios that can follow. And of course, uh, escalation, it's, it's one of them. Modi now, monitoring missions from both sides are, are part of the implementation of this Minsk agreement. So, would you say that this withdrawal of Russian officers from the JCCC uh, is a way for Russia to try to avoid the responsibility in this implementation? Uh, well, not necessarily. However, it could be one of the reasons. Uh, uh, I know that uh, uh, they play their own game and it's very, it was very difficult to work with them, even though we have a common goal, the ceasefire agreement, Every time they try to, to implement their political goal uh, to enforce us to interact with the Russian-backed uh, proxy forces directly, and that's not the case for us. So you're saying there were difficulties to work with them on the field? Uh, well, of course, uh, because we had uh, different goals. <laughs> of course, obviously. Um, now. Ceasefire, we talked about um, Novoluhansk, and you talked about the Balseve earlier. Ceasefire violations have increased, as you said before, dramatically in the past few days. Um, is it a sign of a possible upcoming offensive? Is the Ukrainian armed forces getting ready for an upcoming offensive? Uh, well, uh, our main mission is to be ready for all kinds of possible scenarios. Uh, of course, we are ready. Um, however, I don't think that uh, it will be a real offense uh, of uh, uh, Russian-backed uh, proxy forces. I think that they will just use uh, this uh, current situation to achieve their more wide goals. Uh, I don't know what, can, what exactly these goals might be, but uh, I know that they use it very widely. Um, now, it has raised eyebrows so in, in on Ukraine side and, and in the OSCE, but does this move, uh, if it's definitive, and it sounds definitive, does it mean the end of the Joint Center for Control and Coordination? Well, Alex, uh, to tell you the truth, is that uh, actually the main idea of this body was just uh, to be a joint venture, a joint body. So it, and uh, the whole idea was to have uh, Russians and Ukrainians working uh, together to prevent uh, any ceasefire uh, violations uh, in order to enforce uh, Russian-backed proxy forces of uh, 
these violations because they definitely Russians they had a, a strong influence on the other side and it worked it worked uh, through them uh, very often we were able to stop uh, the fire not from the first time not from the second time maybe it was fifth or sixth but it worked uh, without Russians there it's my personal opinion after my experience with this uh, JCCC, it uh, might not uh, have any sense. So it will yeah. reduce communication Of course, recently. Of course, we will not be able to uh, communicate directly with the Russian-backed separatists and uh, Russians as a, as a link between us, uh, they just disappear. So we already withdrew our officers from other side and Russians uh, did the same. So they gun uh, our, our officers from other side. They gun how we can actually prevent uh, ceasefire violations. No way, unfortunately. Well, unfortunately. Well, I guess the next next days and the next week will will tell us more about uh, it. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, I, I do not exclude the possibility that uh, Russians uh, will be back uh, very soon. How it was done in 1915 after the Balseva. However, I would say that uh, this uh, JCCC was uh, sometimes very effective uh, body or installation uh, or enterprise, I would say, to save lives, uh, or save human lives from both li uh, sides of a separation line. Because it worked and uh, very often we could actually calm down situation on, on the front line. Well, thank you. Hopefully it won't go to uh, uh, extreme ways. And thank you, thank you for joining us in the studio. It was a pleasure you to have welcome. you in the interview. That was Captain Vladislav Litovchenko, Milkup Directorate Head of the General Staff of Ukraine's Armed Forces. Thank you for watching the program. Stay tuned for the rest.